A proud supporter of this program, Riverbend Food Bank's vision is a hunger-free Iowa and Illinois. Whelan Presley Funeral Home and Crematory has been serving Quad City families since 1889. Whelan Presley Funeral Homes are located in Rock Island, Milan, and Reynolds and are proud supporters of WQPT. The unofficial kickoff to the Christmas season. Why it's more than just trees at Festival of Trees in the cities. Welcome to the River Center in downtown Davenport and the annual Festival of Trees. We're here as they're putting some of the finishing touches here at Festival, but it is going to be in full swing through next weekend, and it's all raising money for Quad City Arts. For 11 days each year, the heart of Davenport becomes a Christmas village filled with hundreds of trees, countless holiday ideas. It's open from 9 in the morning until 8 at night. On Sundays, the doors open at 10, and the River Center is closed for Thanksgiving. And joining us is Festival Director Cheryl DeCat. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. 34 years. Yes. It's had quite a run. And I keep thinking, you know, it started in 1986 when the Quad Cities was not in good financial shape, mm -hmm. the middle of the farm crisis, and, and there's been a renaissance in the Quad Cities, but also it seems like there's always been this renaissance for Festival of Trees. I would totally agree. Festival of Trees, the fact that I believe, Jim, that it's a family event is what has made it sustainable. This is your last year, you were saying? Yeah, I'm, it's I'm, gotta be a bittersweet year. It's a very bittersweet year. Um, lots, lots of good here. Lots of good, lots of good times, good memories, but I'll still be around as a volunteer, and, um, but just stepping down from the helm. Let's be honest, I mean, this is not a small undertaking. I, I was just so surprised that you have 3,000 volunteers. You have 650 designers. This is an all year project, I'd assume. Yes. I. Yeah, I'm not sure that we have 650 designers, maybe 650 designs. Okay. Yeah, um, about 120, 550 designers probably. That'd be right, okay, Something I'm like sorry, that. yes. No, that's okay, just want to make sure nobody. Yeah. Um, it is, we, you know, we start, uh, festival will be over on December 1st, but then in January, we will start talking about 2020, which is going to be the anniversary, 35th anniversary year, and we have to pick our theme and start getting the next year rolling because we have to have everything in place for sponsorship issues, for marketing issues, trying to get everything leveled out so nobody is scrambling at the last minute, trying, oh no, we need that, we need that. So it's, it's a year-round year gig. It's a really good thing. Why don't you tell me about the theme for this year? I, I mean, it's, it's, oh. it, it's really important that you, you, you come up with these ideas yeah. each year. Yeah. Christmas around the world. Um, what a perfect way to embrace the entire Quad Cities. We have so much going on in the Quad Cities with different cultures, different groups, and we wanted to embrace that. And we've reached out to everybody that we were aware of to invite them to participate in the parade, to do a design, to do a wreath for a door, to, um, to volunteer, whatever their group or their organization would be interested in. And we've had good response. We're very pleased. And to come and be an act on center stage as well. I got to admit, I mean, you, you do kind of sit back and go, this is how somebody interpreted the theme. Mm -hmm. And you got to be kind of proud of some of these designs. Oh, I think so, because there's so much, you know, you step back and you go, what can you do with that? And the first thing, well, what's going to be my color theme? You know, am I going to go with red, white, and blue? Am I going to go with red, red green, and gold? Um, how about some pink and silver? Um, yeah, so there's, there's really going with around the world um, gives us a lot of things to choose from. I was very excited when we started, um, the ceiling treatment is one of the major things that has to, one of the first things that has to happen. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, thank you. I have to give my kudos to Augustana College because they have loaned us the flags hanging from the ceiling. They had uh, 52 country flags for, when they use them, they present them at graduation time for the students that are graduating from certain countries that are students there. And um, so, yeah, so we have all the flags that we could gather locally that were donated and we have to give them back, of course. But then, I okay, last time with you, I've got to give my kudos to my husband, John, who actually did the layout of the flags for the ceiling. Um, so we knew we they're in alphabetical order. There's a, did you know there's a flag protocol? I did not know it was that extensive, though. There's a flag protocol, yes, and it has to do with the United States flag and then on from there. Right. And so we um, did our research on that, and hopefully we got everything the way it's supposed to be. We'll hope and pray that that's correct. So yeah, it's, um, the theme is wonderful. It's just given us a lot of different 
avenues to march off on. Because you sit there and you talk about, I mean, you, you are really literally thinking from ceiling yes, to floor. Exactly, yes. And, and, and you took possession the first week of, of November and, and you walk into this place and it's really a white sheet of paper. It's an empty slate for you. It's, it's a big blank concrete room. Yes, <laughs> yeah, totally, totally void. And unless you've got some artistic brain and can step back and have a vision, I'm very visual, so I was like, I need to see that happen. Right. Um, but trying to put it all together, once again, that gets back to why we have to work all year long. I mean, even just laying out the floor plan. Um, yeah. It takes a while for us to get all of those ducks in a row because, or, or the trees, so to speak. Um, we you know we've got to get everything, and and we don't know in March how many trees we're going to have or how many doors we're going to have. So it's very important that we do have everything done as early as we can. Festival of Trees sees about a hundred thousand visitors, if not more, coming into the River Center. If you no, not through the so River that Center. The parade and the other parade, events yes. and all that, and, and all of our events, yes. But for all those thousands of people who do walk through the doors of the River Center. What do you want them to walk away with? I mean, you, you steal, anybody who visits, you steal ideas left and right. <laughs> what else do you want people to go uh, walk away with? Oh, Jim, I want them to walk away feeling festive and happy and calm and ready to go home and celebrate the holidays with their families and their friends. This is just, I, I hope that this is a good way for everyone to kick off the holiday season in the Quad Cities. You also really have tried to make festival more and more inclusive. I mean, you have special days, whether it's for uh, special needs mm -hmm. uh, people or, or for our veterans and for yes. military folks. How has that paid off? Um, I think it's wonderful. We actually, on another group is Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we do school tours. And um, this year we have uh, a lot of schools coming back because of our theme and something that we're doing this year for all of the, the children that come through our door, we're doing a passport and in, within it is 12 countries. You're going to have to come back because we're going to have some special things on the floor that if you're a child and have a passport, then there's a sticker page in the passport sure. and then and a map and you have to go find the people on the floor that corresponds with the flag and put your sticker on the right place on the map. It That's should, a great idea. Yeah, it should be really fun. The other thing that I noticed when I walked uh, uh, down the aisles and, and took a look at the displays is that you do have a number of new first-time designers. I mean, uh, some yes. people that are new here. 24. I mean, and th is that a, a record or, or, I mean, that's a lot. That is a lot of people. I don't know if that's a record or not, but uh, for me, that's, you know, if, let's just say we had 150 designs, that's like, you know, as a 20%. Yeah. yeah, we'll just say that. Yeah, I'm not good at math yeah. either. Yeah, that's you know. But still, that's kind of what you want to see is that you don't yes. you don't want festival to become stale. No, not at all. And, and kudos to Pat Wolford, our designer recruitment chair, who um, I don't know you know where she <laughs> comes up with the people or if, whether it's our mailings or if it's our um, social media presence. I don't know what it is, but thank you to all those new people. And we invite anyone to come, please um, participate with us. That's what we want. This is a community event and we want your designs and we want new faces, new blood, and we want our other people to continue to return so we can maybe even grow some more. I always point out, you know, to the beauty of the trees as well as the doors, the wreaths, the mm -hmm. rooms, all of that. Yeah. This is for Quad City Arts. You yes. also make a point of showing off kids' arts, and, yes. and, and, and you know it, it's a key to to show off a little bit of the creativity yeah. throughout the Quad Cities. Um, on the second floor, if you were to go to our Reindeer Games area, we have a trees up there called from our budding designers, and those we have preschools, we have kindergartens, we have um, grade schools. We, it's it's a school area and for the younger kids. But then we switch over and on our floor over on the north wall is our high school art exhibit, which if I remember correctly, we have 16 high schools with art hanging in here this year, um, which says um, hopefully a lot for our presence wanting to get into the schools and they're going, oh, we can go be at Festival Trees and exhibit our art. Um, what a better way to showcase those kids who have that talent. We want to well, to promote that. as you said, this is your last year. What do you, what do you think is the legacy? I mean, there's so much that you're going to be leaving behind that, that oh. everyone can build off of. To build off of, and one thing that um, I started us moving into the digital world. I don't know if I should say I, but um, was involved very heavily with that. And I think that was so important because we are, we live in a digital world and we needed to have things accessible for our designers, for our volunteers, so they didn't have to deal with paper if they didn't want to. Mm -hmm. If they wanted to just do whatever their registrations, their get information on their phones, on their tablets, on their computer, they were able to do that. So the last couple of years, we've spent quite a bit of time making us more digital. So Cheryl important. DeCamp, thank you so much Thanks, for joining Jim. us. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. 
And throughout the program, we want to show off some of the designs that are here. Take a look at this. It's called an American Farmhouse Christmas. It is a winner in the traditional holiday, winning first place in that category, advertising 15 cent sleigh rides and ribbons and bows throughout. An American Farmhouse Christmas was designed by Julie Holiday right here. And still to come, the tastiest part of festival. But first, let's join Laura Adams. She's got some great ideas if you want to head out and about. This is Out and About for November 18th through 24th. It's time for the Quad City Arts Festival of Trees at the River Center November 21st through December 1st. Or join the Festival of Trees Holiday Parade November 23rd starting at 10. Come to the John Deere Commons in Moline for the lighting on the commons as nearly half a million lights and fireworks brighten the skies at 6 on the 23rd. Enjoy a delicious free Thanksgiving meal and warm holiday cheer at the Martin Luther King Center on November 24th from 11 to 3. The Rogalski Center is the venue for the Quad Cities Interfaith fundraising breakfast on the 21st, or join the 150th birthday celebration of John Halberg at the estate on the 24th. Celebrate with cake and a special guest speaker, Mark Schwiebert, at 2. On Wednesday, November 20th at 7 p.m., Roz Talk's music venue presents Their Only Jokes, a comedy special. The Marriage of Figaro is performed at the Brunner Theater Center at Augustana College on the 23rd at 2, and there's still time to catch the gut-busting comedy Loser's Bracket at the Black Box Theater closing on the 24th. Back by popular demand, Elf the Musical at Circa 20 Run, running through the 29th of December. One Body Night, Two Merry Wives, Three Sticky Situations. It's all part of the Prinzy Players production of The Merry Wives of Windsor through the 23rd at the QC Theater Workshop Space. For more information, visit WQPT.org. Thank you, Laura. Are you ready for some outdoor fun? Because this is it. How cool is this? First time designer, the Illawa Council of the Boy Scouts, showing off this homemade traditional design, complete with compass. Take a look, a little canoe, nature scenes throughout, and a burlap garland. Once again, outdoor fun, first place for first time designers, the Illawa Council of the Boy Scouts, all here at Festival of Trees. Well, there are plenty of trees, wreaths, and other decorations all throughout the River Center, but we also have a display that you can literally sink your teeth into. Do you like that yeah, one? I did. <laughs> Linda Harmon is joining us right now. You are the chair of the uh, Gingerbread Village. That's this correct. is your second year of doing it. Yes. Tell me about this village because I mean, there is, there's a lot of work that goes into this. There is. Um, the good thing about that is we have children, adults, mm -hmm. seniors, everyone can get involved. Uh, it can be a family project, it can be um, a friends project, and I mean everyone can get involved. And to the uh, as small as they want or sure. as large as they want. There's just a couple calories in there, isn't there? There is. Just a little <laughs> bit of sugar, isn't there? There is. Now you start off early in the year, I mean you actually try to recruit people to help make the gingerbread village, but every single yes. item is for sale. That is true. All of the villages, we also have what's called ginger art. So. Um, because you call yourself pretty much a sugar <laughs> artist? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that, I mean how did you get involved? Well, uh, for about the last 30 years, I've been involved in sugar, uh, creating chocolate pieces, uh, cakes, um, flowers, all of that kind of thing that you can, uh, that's made with sugar of some sort or another. You know, everybody does look at the trees and they go, ooh and <laughs> ah. Why should they, they look at the gingerbread house? Because I mean, let's be honest, there's a lot of detail in the work that you guys did as well. There is. Um, and each year, I think when we see the entries, especially the returning people, the, it's like they grow from year to year yeah. and they reach out and try to um, make things that are more challenging, uh, maybe larger. Um, so it. When you were around, you know, all of last year, I mean, you know. I mean, people have to pay for the gingerbread uh, creations, and we'll talk about that, but they steal the ideas. <laughs> Is that <laughs> the, so? I mean, do you notice do. that? Well, and the, this year it's um, obviously um, Christmas around the world is mm -hmm. our theme for um, the arts, and so you'll see that some of the um, 
houses or art have kind of gone with that theme. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's others that have their, they're kind of a rebel and decide what they want to do. Um, but it's just really neat to see um, how yeah, the houses come together and what they what they're thinking. As yeah, far the, as the that artist's goes. mind, so to speak. Right, right. It, it, it's, it's one of those things because I, I think a lot of people think of gingerbread houses as the thing that you make on your kitchen table, and it's the kids just slopping stuff on. <laughs> but this is quite the opposite of that. It is, and I think uh, some of the kids that when they drop theirs off, you know, they're hmm. so excited and they want to tell you about what they did, how they did it, what's in it, um, who may they have done it with, and... The uh, whole backstory. The, the whole story, yes. I had one gal, in fact, a uh, little girl came and checked hers in, and she said, I have to tell you about mine. She said, I have games in mine, and they're, they're playing tic-tac-toe, and... <laughs> They're playing the like duck, duck, goose game. And there was another game in there and I used this and I used that, which was just, it's awesome to see when they uh, get involved like that and, and once talk again, about it. All of them are for sale because the whole point is to try to raise money for Quad for City Arts. Quad City Arts, that's correct. So another child can benefit from the sales. And uh, um, you know, I just, it's an awesome experience. Do you see them. people coming in to the Gingerbread Village area and just staying a little longer than uh, they probably even thought? <laughs> they do, and they're pointing out, oh, look at this, look at this. <laughs> oh, look at the details on this. So they, people do come, and they are totally impressed by even the smallest, youngest child's creation because they just think, wow, you know, they, they took the time and the effort and did that. So... Linda Hartman, thank you so much for joining us. All right. The chair thank of you. the Gingerbread Village. <laughs> Make sure you stop by, see these creations, and know yes. that there's a lot of heart and soul going in them as well. That's true. Well, this one captures a lot of people's idea of what should be happening right now. It's called Let It Snow, first place in artistic traditional trees with some snowflake ornaments and holly garland. It is all meticulously hand cut for this display. Julie Bonstetter is the one that designed Let It Snow, one another designs that you can see here at Festival of Trees. Well, we found a group of young musicians who helped spread the holiday spirit. They were at North Park Mall last year. They'll be there again this year, and they all have one thing in common. It's called the Quad City Saxophone Christmas, and they're playing a Charlie Brown favorite, definitely a favorite of mine. Christmas time is here.
That is the Quad City Saxophone Christmas. Once again, they were playing at North Park Mall last year. In fact, they're going to be at North Park Mall again this year. It's coming up on December 7th. That concert starts at 10 in the morning. Part of the saxophone group will also be here at the River Center. They'll be at Festival of Trees Saturday afternoon at 3.30 show you another one of the displays here. This one will get you and your pets hopping. It's called a dog's wish. It was a first place finisher in the holiday entry with a pair of paper mache dogs. They seem ready to break down the door for a puppy massage. Sarah Zinger is the one that created a dog's wish that you can see right here at Festival of Trees. Well, you can't miss it if you come down to Festival of Trees. It's a 20 foot tall tree like none other at the River Center filled with presents that will be given out when festival is over and it's all for Toys for Tots. And joining us is the chair of the toy tree. It's Mickey Verban Kranz. Thank you so much for joining us. The tree dominates <laughs> the atrium, doesn't Thank it? Thank you. Yes. Well, tell yes. me about it. I mean, uh, people. Uh, it's such a fixture here at festival. Yeah, um, I was actually really honored to get the role to do this tree several years ago. A friend of mine uh, brought me on as a co-chair and then uh, she went off to do other things in festival. And so the toy tree is definitely uh, a big, huge part of my holiday season, my family's holiday season. Um, and we spend weeks getting ready to collect all the toys. Because that's the point. I mean, the, the, the toy tree, of course, is for Toys for Tots. Uh, the, the U.S. Marine Corps Reserve is a program to get uh, toys to uh, uh, children throughout the Quad City area. Can you bring toys here? Because there's already toys on the tree. There, Yes, there are, actually. And that's the hardest part, I think, about the Toys for Tots toy tree drive for festival is that we start so early. Right. And people are like, well, wait, I haven't even dressed for Halloween yet. It's like, I know, but festival's coming. Festival's coming. So we have to get our toys. So we always start our drive right around the time of Halloween. And we stop um, about the you know, we usually build the tree the Monday before uh, festival starts. And as, as, as many of the toys that you have, you plaster them on the trees, but yeah. you also want to see more donate. I mean, it doesn't oh. end here. Oh, no, absolutely not. I mean, the Toys for Tots program is amazing. Um, we're just really glad that we get to be a part of it. We have 568 toys on the tree this year, and um, the more that we can collect for the Toys for Tots, the, be the better. Uh, we do have the Marines come the last day of festival, so about four o'clock when everybody's starting to, to go home for the, the year, we start getting out the scissors and cutting the tree apart, and then the Marines come in with their trucks and their uniforms and take the toys to the local warehouse. Kind so, of bittersweet though, but I mean, it really does serve its purpose. You know what, for me, I, I can't explain the feeling of you know, we get families to come help cut the toys off. We encourage them to bring their children and to have the kids dismantle it and put them in boxes and then see the Marines come and just take them away. And I think that we all get to see how many people really do get affected by this and have a better Christmas because of, of a, a work of art. Festival of Trees also has the uh, book tree that's on the second floor. Yeah. Also, these are donations to kids. I mean, is this really an important part, do you think, of festival? Because so many people look at the trees, look at the doors, look at the pretty things, but this is a, mm -hmm. a real way of giving back to the entire community. Well, and that's what the entire uh, Festival of Trees is about. Everything that we do is to bring money to arts for the children in the Quad Cities. Not just, you know, it's not about just Christmas trees and lights and cookies, but it's about, you know, we are here to collect as much money as we can to keep the arts and to inspire the children throughout the Quad Cities year round. So yes, uh, we the, the toy tree is a big attraction to bring families in, but it's also to help maybe remind people that, you know, Christmas is magic and it's every year. And if we all work together, we can help many, many, many more kids year round. Let's talk about this tree in particular because you have bought, gotten, like you said, hundreds <laughs> of yes. toys on this tree. That's no simple deal. Um, it's not. It's it's a little nerve wracking because I know every year the pressure's on at a certain time that I need to have I need to have things to build the tree with. Um, this year we did something a little different. I actually made an Amazon wish list mm. and shared that out with social media. And that was a lot of fun to see the UPS man come every day and wonder Ooh, what's in this box and get to give a shout out to people. I mean, we've had uh, business partners. Um, Remax River Cities is actually a sponsor of the tree this year. So their agents collected 
amazing amount of toys. And then they shared the website link with their clients and friends and family. And just to see the wave of giving and to you know, uh, go from, we had a room that we were collecting the toys in and that room was so full, we had to have an overflow room and then that had to have an overflow room. Because it is listed on you know, the Festival of Trees website can you still give because there there, oh. there is a uh, an Amazon link that yes. kind of showed the things that you were looking for. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Just because a tree is built, we are still, you know, if you want to donate to Toys for Tots, please do. Um, all the toys we will gather and give to the Marines um, on that December 1st date when festival's over. Are there little secrets on that tree? <laughs> are there things that you're sitting there going, I wonder if anyone's uh, going to notice this? Um, there's always a couple <laughs> things, I think, from a designer standpoint, um, because yes, it, it is a grouping of toys, but I, you know, we work really hard to make it attractive and it is a visual art piece. Um, there are things that I, I hope nobody notices <laughs> and there, there are things in the tree too. So the key is spend a little, <laughs> don't just walk by. Yeah. There's artwork and there's a little bit of yes. secret in there? There's, well, and what a lot of people don't realize is that the tree is hollow inside. <laughs> and there's things inside too, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it here well, first. <laughs> well, you know, toys, toys, they fall, they break, sure. the boxes pop open, yeah. you know, we can't put them on the tree. Right. Um, but I think next year I'm going to do maybe a little bit of an I spy and do a poem for kids to read where they have to spot something. Oh, very good. Yeah. Well, we look forward to that yeah, then. Thanks. Mickey Verbin Grants, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us in charge of the toy tree yes. here at Festival of Trees. Thank you. And once again, Festival of Trees runs through next Sunday. The doors are open from 9 until 8 o'clock every day. The Sundays, it's open from 10 until 4. And once again, it is closed for Thanksgiving. WQPT also has a commitment to the military and its families of the cities. We call it Embracing the Military. And Quarters One is opening its doors to a holiday historic tour. What was once the second largest residence in the federal government, only the White House is bigger, is now open and fully decorated for the season. Tours will be held December 1st from noon until 2 in the afternoon. Call the Leisure Travel Office in Building 333 to make your reservations. On the air, on the radio, on the web, and on your mobile device, thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues on the cities. A proud supporter of this program, Riverbend Food Bank's vision is a hunger-free Iowa and Illinois. Whelan Presley Funeral Home and Crematory has been serving Quad City families since 1889. Whelan Presley Funeral Homes are located in Rock Island, Milan, and Reynolds and are proud supporters of WQPT.